Oceans are big, and recreating an ocean in a video game can be tough, especially if you need to build an ocean that is infinite like I do. This isn't 1995 anymore, and flat blue water with a little animation isn't going to bring home the metaphorical bacon. Players want detail, and detail can take up precious computing power. So if I want to build a convincing ocean system that goes on forever, I need to go beyond the single plane mesh. My approach will be to create a grid system that surrounds the player. The center grid will be at the highest detail, the second level will have a reduced detail, and the last level will have the smallest amount of detail. Overall, it will use a total of 17 plane meshes that I can instance and will still be cold if they're behind the camera. If I used a single mesh, even if all this information is behind the player, it would still be rendered. My first step is to create my water plane mesh. And I'm actually gonna be using the water plane mesh that I used in my water shader tutorial as my foundation. And if you'd like more info on that water shader or the complete in-depth tutorial on how I created an infinite ocean, you can find it and the full Gato Engine project files for free at stayathomedev.com. Now this shader kind of looks more like a calm lake than an ocean, so I need to bump up the vertex displacement. My initial approach used a single noise texture overlaid on top of the mesh using world position UV coordinates. And this looks convincing under the right circumstances, but I need more ocean-like noise and directional variation. My solution is to adjust the noise texture to be more ocean-like. After testing a few, I'm really liking the value cubic and ridged option with some slight alteration to the gain and weight settings. This gives me a bit more slope on the waves and a sharper crest without getting into trochoidal waves just yet. Something to definitely try in a future video. With an improved noise texture, I want to duplicate my first wave displacement and move that second one in a different direction. I set up a function in my shader that will allow me to get the height value of my noise texture for my first wave, second wave, and both waves combined. I'll use the third option to get the combined height value for my animated noise and apply it to the vertices of my mesh. The result is a bit more convincing wave effect. But with my displacement set up, I have an issue with the normals of my mesh and it's that they don't reflect the change in the vertex height. The solution is to simply create a normal map version of my wave noise and combine them just like I did for the displacement. This creates a normal map that I can blend with my existing normal map details and then apply it in my shader. I now feel I have a pretty convincing wave tile. And if the player were really, really tiny, we might be done, but we want an ocean that goes on forever. The grid system itself should be pretty simple to set up. I just need to loop through each tile, spawn an instance at a specified location, and then apply a subdivision and scale setting to each tile. My tile coordinates will start with my center tile at zero, zero, radiating outward for the next level and then for the final level. The center tile will also have a subdivision of 199. The second level will have that at 99, and the final level will have no subdivision at all. Now you might be saying that 99 is not half of 199, and you would be right. But the subdivision setting refers to the number of vertices between the edge vertices of the mesh. 99 creates 101 vertices, and 199 creates 201 vertices but I want the number of quads to be a two to one ratio. With these settings, my center mesh will have 200 quads per row and my next level will have 100 quads, so half. Finally, the outer level will also scale by three and equal the size of both the middle and second level tiles. With my spawn data placed in arrays, I can create a function that loops through each tile and applies the proper settings. For my base tile size, I will use 10.05 meters to make the math a bit cleaner. 10.05 divided by the number of vertices, 201 equals 0.05, meaning each vertex will be 0.05 meters apart. And this will come in handy later on. My function works and has spawned my ocean system. At this point, I want to add some better visuals, so I add my world environment and sky setup and a directional light for the sun. And now the waves and normal map are showing up a lot better. But now that my ocean grid is spawning larger, I'm noticing a couple of issues. 
There are very noticeable seams between the different tile levels. This is because the subdivision values are different and extra vertices are showing additional height data. And two, the final tile level really shouldn't have any displacement because I'm not doing any subdivision. I can head back into my water shader and compare the vertex world position with the position of my player or the camera. For this, I'll use a global shader parameter that I will then set every frame to equal the position of my player. Then comparing the world position and player position, I clamp that value by the max distance I want to show displacement. In this case, 85 meters, then divide the result by the max distance again to get range of value between zero and one. Then I can multiply my existing height code by my vertex distance value, subtract it from one to reverse it. I should now have a gradually reducing height displacement from the center of my ocean system. Now the next issue of seams is gonna take a little bit more effort. My problem is that every other vertex on the edges of my center mesh don't line up to a vertex in the second level. The solution would be to isolate every vertex that sits between vertices of the second level, then find the height values of the vertices on either side of it, then average those values so that the middle vertex falls in line with the second level. My solution to isolate my vertices was to use the position of the vertex on the UV of the mesh to determine whether it was an odd or even vertex. Because I have 201 vertices in my center mesh, I only need the even, which would be the vertices that, when rounded, would be divisible by 10. So I created a couple if statements to check if the vertex was even or odd, and then whether it was on the edge of the mesh. This isolated my vertices, and I could now use the this code to find the heights of the adjacent vertices and average them. And remarkably, this all worked and my seams had disappeared. My last objective is to make the ocean infinite. Obviously, if the player moved far enough now, they would reach the edge. And despite some people who think otherwise, the world isn't flat. And my solution is actually going to be to move the ocean with the player. Because the normal map and displacement maps for my shader are tied to world position and not the UVs of my meshes, they are actually static in the world. Moving the entire ocean system would essentially have the meshes scan along the infinite noise textures, giving the sense that the ocean is going on forever. By locking the position of the ocean to the position of the player, we ensure that the player will never see or reach the edge of the system. And since I already set my global shader parameter for my displacement gradient and my shader, my displacement height values will also follow the player. The only thing really to do is to update the position of the ocean to equal the position of the player every frame. And with that, I have an infinite ocean for the player to move through. If you would like to follow the in-depth tutorial on how to make your own infinite ocean in the Gato engine, or would like to download the project files, you can do both by going to stayathomedev.com. And if you're curious how I made the water shader, you can watch my tutorial video here. Thanks for watching and keep creating.